just got done door dashing oh again. And it's just like, I want to fucking, I just want some food. And when you get the Burger King uh, on that road, uh, Burger King on Burger. the street, on Burger King that, Road. That, that Burger King gets busy as fuck. And oh, yeah. For some reason. Oh, you know, it pisses me off is when people just park in the fucking street. Not like park in the street, but, you know, like you're in the line, you go out into the street. But there, there was this guy, and he has so much fucking room in front of him. <laughs> He's only taking up the necessary space that I need to get around him. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that there's something in the air of, like, people in this area that just makes them dog shit drivers. <laughs> like, roads. Dude, when I was driving down unnamed roads, Road that's made out of moon rocks. Uh, it was like the <laughs> gravel. <laughs> <laughs> All the roads around here are gravel, essentially. But it yeah, was uh, thinking, it's very hilly, and it's one of the most shit roads in town. So like, I was coming home from uh, school one day, and mm-hmm. I was like, there was this person in front of me going like the speed limit, and I was like, okay, I don't really care. I'm I'm not gonna pass him yeah. just because the lanes are super small, and I'm like, I I kind of just don't care. It was also raining a little bit. So this person just like slams on their brake at the bottom of the hill. And I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, they go literally like 20 miles an hour and they're like avoiding every pothole. I'm like, yeah, I get it. But you can't do that when there's people behind you and there's people behind me. There's people yeah. next to you. I'm like, do you know how fucking dangerous that is? Yeah. Tank, either tank the, the potholes or go 35 and maneuver. I just, Good luck. I just tank them. Honestly, you at tank this point, them. I, I want to go home for like, for like a sedan. I think it's tougher because like you're in you're in like an SUV. You know you you can kind of tank those. It was yeah. also an SUV. Yeah. When, when I was oh, really? in, yeah. well, that stupid. When I was in the SUV, I was able to like tank those fucking potholes, no problem. But now that I've swapped to a fucking four door shithole, um, no, <laughs> yeah. it's not happening. I've been uh, looking a lot at like EVs recently. Mm. Electric because, vehicle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that. I've been looking at EVMs, electrical vehicle manslaughter. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wondering the laws in that. Yeah. The morality really. Yeah. Like, I what if I were know. to turn on the autopilot after it happens? That's like, was that idea. accountable? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if Why are you looking at me? <laughs> Why are you looking at me like I know about it? Yeah, you did the I mean, research. You're the one looking at EVs. You're the one that vehicular manslaughter. <laughs> I, uh, it's a hobby. <laughs> You guys want to go manslaughtering? <laughs> it's a nice day out. People are outside for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but we have no excuses if we hit if we hit people. Ah. Uh, you know, it's, I'll not, settle it's for not raining. Dogs. Dogs. Oh, okay. Yeah. You just GTA style, just drive full speed on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> not funny. I'm Anyways, trying to curb it's boost. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> I'm speed running. <laughs> You're trying to drip boost like it's Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> I got to speed run to Walmart real quick. <laughs> Um, what I was going to say was because I'm searching for a job, I'm like, oh, well, Fringe. after I get a job, I'll actually be making money to live off of. And yeah. I was like, I could probably, you know, after I get a job and become stable and everything, I can look for uh, vehicles and stuff. And I was yeah. thinking about how much I don't want a gas car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gas is annoying as fuck. Just unplug your fucking washing machine, plug in your car every night. What sucks is there's no... Uh, there's like no uh, like vehicle charging stations around here. For it, yeah. yeah. And uh, infrastructure in it? terms of like domestic infra- infrastructure to like houses and shit. Most of them don't even have a plug in like the garage like that. Yeah. I, you can get them installed and I don't think it's that tough to yeah, get them I don't installed. Think it's, yeah. But I don't like, think it's that hard. But it's still annoying that like there isn't really a wide network yet of like charging stations. Like those exist in Europe and there's like there's a lot of charging Yeah, there's stations. a bunch. There's way more EVs uh in terms of around here, there's maybe one like downtown, which is 30 minutes away. And then there's like one in the richer neighborhoods. And yeah, it's like, which is yeah, like 20 makes minutes sense. Away. Yeah. So imagine everyone pulling up to the, the local car charge. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everyone in the, in the 30 mile radius has an electric car. <laughs> yeah, you know, everyone there, like for sure. Yeah. Well, you've seen them every time you go to get your fucking electricity. <laughs> I'm like, wow, two and a half hours <laughs> since, you know. <laughs> I just drove three hours to get here. I'm going to need a charge <laughs> on the way back, too. <laughs> Jesus. Especially living in, like, an apartment. There's no way. Oh, yeah, fuck Like, that. you just can't get an electric car. Yeah. Just, like, crash your car into, like, the 
the power station and then just charge it there. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> just wireless crash charging. It, <laughs> crash it into a telephone pole, rewire it. <laughs> You're literally like hot wiring yeah. street uh, transformers. You're like controlling the grid through your Tesla. <laughs> if you like gas it up, like a bunch of transformers explode. I become an electrical engineer just to fucking charge my EV. <laughs> You're doing fucking terrorism now. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I've noticed is uh, their range is always I, I didn't really realize this, but their range is like not good compared to gas cars. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, no, it's, still, it's still electric. usable. <laughs> yeah, it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> They're still pretty usable. But I remember Volkswagen was coming out with a new car and it's or not Volkswagen. Um, whoever Hyundai. fucking makes the uh, Nissan, like the little hatchbacks. What are they called? Little hatchback. The Mini Coopers. Um, there's a there's an electric Mini Cooper coming out, oh, okay. and its range is literally like 130 miles. And like my car now from 2009 has like 400 miles of range, yeah. which is well on freeway, mm -hmm. which is giving it a little bit of a boost yeah. in stats. But well, because it's like cars have had like a hundred years to like evolve yeah. and like get better and better and better. You watch and this ad for ten new. minutes of battery life in your car. <laughs> 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 that would be so Download up. more RAM. <laughs> In the future, you start getting spam ads from like <laughs> like a virus on your Tesla. You can't drive anymore. <laughs> oh my you god! You just like you just I want pack it to spam a car. Wait, isn't that just watchdogs? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if like, like boop, you get install an app on your car, <laughs> explodes the car in Dude. front of you if, if they're driving too you slow. Think do you think there's going to be like ransomware that people get, get fucked with with Teslas? It's like, yeah, like, we took a photo of you masturbating in your car. <laughs> Unless you send us $10,000, we won't unlock your Tesla. <laughs> this is coming from Tesla. <laughs> Eli, signed by Elon. <laughs> this is all a sick revenge plot porn for, for yeah. Elon. No, Elon, it's Elon got cucked once in a Tesla. Once! This is if you drive other EVs, he does oh, this to you. Yeah, He's yeah. like, since you're not in a Tesla, you've been <laughs> loaded into our masturbation database. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's probably going to be a whole bunch of bloatware in the future, depending on which car maker you get. So like you get a, a Honda electric car and it's like, you know, when you get a, a like an Android phone, most Android phones, depending on the maker, has a lot of like bloatware and shit on it. Yeah, yeah my Tesla only has one terabyte of space worth on it. I think I'm going to need to upgrade my hard drive soon. <laughs> you need to install an <laughs> SSD for your car. I really want to get Red Dead Redemption 2 on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking on the highway. You're just playing Red Dead Dude, do you guys, did you guys try the horse controls update? <laughs> <laughs> GTA 5 will still be out <laughs> yeah, 30 years God. from now. Skyrim will be re-released again. On the, f on, on the fucking Tesla? <laughs> like, we are now bringing Skyrim to car. <laughs> Skyrim car edition. <laughs> edition. Car soul. Car, car, car souls. Welcome You're carborn. to the Null Thought Podcast. Oh, wait, yeah, we're doing that? I'm Zane. <laughs> Anthony, I'm Anthony, I'm Anthony. Me. <laughs> That's Alex. Hello. <laughs> Right. Today we got a lot of special things lined up for you. Here's where we hype Don't up the podcast. Them. Don't lie to yeah. them. When we inevitably fail to meet your expectations. Perfect. Have we met an expectation before? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Did we Let us know your expectations and how we disrupted them. Did we them. successfully lower the bar for you? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've only had a couple episodes where we, you know, so far have been. I think we've been pretty consistent, honestly. On uploading, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Even then, maybe not. Yeah, we no. missed a couple weeks, but oh well. I mean, doing it as, you know, full-time college students who yeah, also have yeah, jobs. Yeah, full-time cops. Tough. It's really full tough. Yeah. Full-time yeah. undercover <laughs> podcast cops. <laughs> it's really the sucks. New, something, that's a new sitcom. Something that I was, uh, I was thinking about recently on my drive to school is just because I think of bullshit when I'm driving. Um, undercover some, students. Every person that I've met that's been like, "Oh yeah, I want to, I want to be a cop," has smoked weed. Oh yeah, and they're always like, which is like, I guess fine. Yeah. But well, in terms of here's getting, the thing, I trust the people smoking weed to be cops more than the people who have never seen weed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I completely agree. I completely agree. But the thing is, like, I think that you have to take like an actual lie detector test based on the state that you're from. Because I've heard people. Mm, I remember. When I was a lifeguard, there was a person that came to the pool all the time. And he was saying that he used to smoke weed like back in high school and college and stuff. He was older, maybe like late 20s. And he was saying how he wanted to become a, a cop old uh, <laughs> back when he lived in Montana or whatever. He was either Montana, Montana. or Minnesota. Um, and he was saying like how he had to take a lie detector to, uh, test and he got Aren't those denied. like super not accurate, though? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know. 
I'm pre- I'm pretty sure like have you, you can't taken even, a lie detector pretty, test. No, like the thing is you can't use a lie detector test in court because of how inconsistent and, or it's probably, I thought it was, probably I thought it was, in some really yeah. shitty states, but like for the most part, it's generally accepted that lie detectors are so fucking unreliable that you don't use them as evidence because it doesn't amount to shit in evidence. The way that I saw it was that I thought I I, I don't know anything about the actual laws, just a preface, but the way that I saw it was like because of their accuracy you couldn't do it and it was like an infringement on your your uh your rights as a human because so, no. you can basically just get hooked up to a lie detector mm-hmm. test and your entire history could just be asked about it's like well, where were you here and it's like yeah. oh i was at home lie yeah well the thing is, is that there's, off my there's bed there's way that's outside car. in the back so i wasn't really in my home but <laughs> i had a mirror <laughs> <laughs> there's ways to like beat lie detector tests and there's um really yeah and there's yeah, ways you, to like fuck you up not, the readings right when you answer <laughs> like your heart <laughs> stops but actually if you if like you split second. <laughs> people say like if you squeeze your asshole or something it like fucks with the readings what? so like when you when you say the when you say like I'm what, try it. when you say he the started answer, lying you we haven't asked him anything yeah. <laughs> I mean, what how so much are lie detector tests that'd be a good bit oh they're probably f- expensive we should we should just get one of those like shocking ones those they are more should, those are more accurate than <laughs> yeah because you're you're probably more frightened about telling a lie so your brain waves that's actually uh i think that actually works for itself because the more the more penalty you have for lying, the more that you don't want to lie, which makes your brain. That's the fundamental idea of torture. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> we got it. it. We got it. <laughs> which is probably why you can't be hooked up to a lie detector <laughs> test in most legal situations. Yeah. Yeah. What's it called? You want to be an interesting bit, too, is uh, uh, I remember watching it. I think it was like the fucking hot ones guy, Seth Everman. <laughs> not, yeah. not him. Not him. I don't know. They're both bald babies, but like. Bald babies. <laughs> Anthony but, Fantano, the hot ones guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, he was he was doing a thing with like uh, I think it was the people from Good Mythical Morning. Red uh, Link. Yeah, Red Link. Yeah, and it was a whole thing where it's like it's either eat a hot wing or tell the truth. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think, think that'd that. be really cool. Uh, I, I think that I enjoy hot, spicy food as a means of extortion more than electrocution. <laughs> uh, personally, <laughs> either tell the truth or you have to take a round of the Russian roulette gun that we've laid on the table. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll just take it every time. <laughs> yeah, <Shit. laughs> take two, five shots. You, <laughs> and then the you're next one, you're just like, the next one is going to be the bullet. He's like stressed, <laughs> like, <laughs> puts the gun across the table at your turn. <laughs> 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 it's like the worst game of hot potato ever. It really is. <laughs> it's like it's like well, um, <laughs> S- super Russian roulette. There's there's two bullets in the chamber, but there's Ooh. only three spaces total. <laughs> yeah, and you ha- they give you like po- like positioning on one of them, and then relative positioning of the other bullet. Yeah, they, you, you they give, give you a hint. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they give you a hint. You have to you have to figure it out through the through the riddle. <laughs> Speaking of brutal torture, how is Elden Ring? I'm enjoying it. it. I like it a lot. I'm surprised you haven't played it, Alex. I'm like, I'm gonna be honest. I'm kind of soulsed out. Like, really? I've, soulsed out. I have, I have over two thousand hours in Dark Souls One. Yeah, soul sucked. I have about a thousand hours in Dark Souls Two. I'm trying to get soul. I haven't beat Dark Souls Three. I'm about 120 hours. I didn't beat it either. Um, Sekiro. I've beaten it. Probably about 200 hours. And I just kind of don't fucking care about Souls games anymore. I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. Like I'm, I've I've beaten zero of those games, so I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> I know that's all. That's like much once it. you learn to speed run a game, like it kind of ruins a little bit about that game to you. And it's like I cannot look at Souls games the same without trying to figure out how to cheese some bullshit mechanic going on with it. There's a lot of cheese commentary going on in the the Elden Ring community. Oh, now. absolutely, dude! I saw something where like some dude's got like magic finger and he just fucking points at people and they die. <laughs> what the fuck? But from what I've from, from what I've garnered about the uh, attention that that game is uh, getting and the discourse behind it, there are a lot of ways to cheese. Oh yeah, yeah no, that they, may not actually be legit, but I I think what the the approach that they took with Elden Ring was probably a a better one. Uh, they tried to make it more accessible, and obviously there are like a lot of cheese OP builds, which is going to totally fuck with PvP. I don't even know if that game has PvP. It does. It yeah. does. That's gonna be awful. Like the PvP community is just going to be. 
fucking call to arms. They're going to be rioting in the streets <laughs> without a doubt. I haven't but been the, PV, the PVE yet. gameplay, and I think what is the main focus of the game is just a really nice, uh, easygoing experience that allows for the challenges should you, you know, yeah, choose to go it. for them. Yeah, you can you can choose to summon whatever the fuck wolf that will make this, you know, boss scared of your toes. Or you see an enemy in the distance and you're like, oh, I'm going to go kick its ass and you get one stomped and die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you have the ability for these items that make, you know, like say an enemy is like afraid of beans or something. You're like, oh, a can of beans I found opened up over <laughs> in this fucking tower over here. Baked beans. And then Pocket they, beans. Pocket <laughs> beans, yeah. And then they disintegrate. Like that kind of stuff. I like having options, but I, do, I also like not being forced to do things because I sometimes too like slamming my head against a wall. <laughs> I mean, within, with a Souls like that, like, or I mean, it's not a Souls Souls like it is a Souls game, but with a Souls game like that, that seems like it's part of the game. You it's know? an Elden like, actually. <laughs> what? It's I a ring like, actually. What the, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's it's a ring light. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're vloggers. <laughs> <laughs> the name, the game hey guys, itself. Drock Thor of. <laughs> <laughs> no maidens today. <laughs> no maidens. That meme is so no funny. Maidens. I haven't been touched by a woman in thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to game. lay in this bitch's lap. <laughs> what does Elden Ring expand on in terms of the Souls games? Don't besides it doesn't, like the, the uh, open world aspect, which I guess Dark Souls usually has a little bit of. Yeah, but it's Dark way Souls more itself. It, it's not. No, it's definitely not linear. It's just that this difficulty scaling. Uh, it kind of imposes a f not necessarily a forced linearity, but it, it, like it. It encourages you to go a more linear route, like a path you have to I mean, kind of. Yeah, well, that's some an Elden Ring. Yeah, huh? some paths are easier. I, I think that like they both are the same in their open world aspect, where it's just like you're in this giant area. Some things are more difficult than others. Maybe you should, you know, be a little baby. <laughs> you know, go try the easy baby mode path. But if you're feeling like a uh, like a little tyke, you want to go. You know, I'm I'm a big boy. You can go down the big scary dark path and get <laughs> clopped by like Norse god Superman. I, I think like the cool thing about Elden Ring is that there aren't like paths. Like you, you literally go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You do whatever the fuck you want. You know what I mean? And then you will run into walls sometimes. Um, you know, with certain enemies or, or whatever. <laughs> like, dude, I, I was like going through this forest and I was like, oh hey, a bear. And I and I just passed it. And then I saw this fucking like mega bear that was like jacked. It looked like King Kong and it started fucking chasing me and it was faster than my horse. And it fucking <laughs> caught up to me and like insta killed me. Yeah. And nice. like you should have killed the baby bear. <laughs> piss it yeah, off. Probably. Probably. You're right. Um and like, you know, I think um, you know, I think there's like it, it's tape. It's not uh I don't think it's nearly uh as linear as the, anthony has the tape now as the other souls games personally <laughs> I've, been, I've been playing with a roll of tape and alex <laughs> has asked for my tape and he dropped it because he's a pussy bitch and didn't play baseball he's got no fingers i <laughs> no didn't play fingers. catch with my dad i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> so anthony how's your experience been with it i enjoy it a lot i um there have been like so many moments where i'm like like screaming at the game like <laughs> not in anger i'm like what the fuck what the fuck i gotta go i gotta go like i'm like the dogs in that game are insane and they're they're annoying as fuck they're like they look like giant um doodles like golden doodles but they're <laughs> like, just imagining they're, like, like doodle bob <laughs> <laughs> those are the hardest enemies for sure um, oh my god spongebob <laughs> <laughs> but like the dogs they their attack pattern and their speed is like the most annoying thing to uh, like encounter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like they just fuck you up or at least fuck me up because I'm not good at Souls games. Oh, really. uh, yeah. That's usually usually the number one killer of not being good. <laughs> yeah. You think so? <laughs> but I, because probably I, bad. I, yeah. True, I, I would true. like to I would like to mention that I fucking hate the Dark Souls community. <laughs> why wow there in anytime you have any genuine like complaint with how the game works and like how like something like it doesn't make realistic sense that this mechanic should work like this they're gonna be all like get good you just yeah. can't appreciate it's difficulty because the, like, the game can do no wrong yeah, essentially it, they they've essentially put like the souls like games on these pedestals where it's like yeah any bug you encounter no matter the the size or the quantity 
it's intended, you know? You mm-hmm. just got to get mm-hmm. better than the bug that you're experiencing or like this shitty mechanic that, you know, nobody likes in the first place, but you got to get good. Mm-hmm. But in contrast to in the in the same breath of air, they're going to be like, oh, well, if you cheese the game, you're not playing the game correctly, which is, I guess, counterintuitive to exactly what they're saying in that regard. So yeah. it's just kind of inconsistent. The, I got into a, a big discussion uh, over the like the argument yeah, <laughs> online in a forum uh, over essentially just like oh you know the samurai in elden ring supposedly the samurai class is overpowered right i've heard that yeah Yeah. and i think there's a few overpowered classes the the whole thing is just like you could go whatever fucking meta build you want and you're gonna be overpowered Mm -hmm. so shut the fuck up please (laughs) it's like you i'm going for a, a, a sorcery build it's like yeah at the end of the game you can fucking Tickle them and they die. Yeah. <laughs> like, of course you're gonna get strong if you follow your build path, jackass. Yeah. <laughs> and I've also heard that in Elden Ring, it's um, what's it called? Apparently, like your class becomes way less relevant as like time goes on. Uh, that's like, just how yeah. the Souls games are. You okay, start yeah. with like your base stats, and then you can like it's not like it's yeah, locking it you for capping yeah. any of those things. You yeah. can go up to 99 max on all your skills. Yeah. But it's just like, what are your starting stats going to be? Mm-hmm. That's all the fucking class does. Yeah. You could be like a fucking, uh, what, like the, probably they have like a naked class yeah. or whatever in Elden Ring. You could start with a naked class and you could be the smartest fucking sorcerer you've ever seen. True. End game. I mean, redeemed. It's the redemption arc. <laughs> the redemption <laughs> to make a mind. bad. And essentially, personally, in, good, my, yeah. in my experience, I haven't had like any moments where I was like, that was an unfair death. You know what I yeah, mean? No, I, I feel like Elden Ring does a really good yeah. job. They've learned from all billion fucking souls like yeah. games out there. And I've it's done a good job. I'm really curious to see what George R.R. R. Martin wrote on this fucking story. It's um, I think it's a really cool story Um, so far. I think it's. I think the game in general, like the atmosphere and everything in the world is just so cool. Like yeah. to, to look at everything and the character design or like the enemy designs and no everything. Maidens. Huh? No, no maidens. maidens. No maidens. No maidens. <laughs> I can be your maiden. I no. can be your maiden, baby. <laughs> yeah. Getting a 97 on Metacritic was something I was kind of surprised by. Mm. I was not at all surprised. I fully expected everyone to suck this game's dick, and then I expected it to be bad, but then everyone sucked its dick, and it turned out pretty well, so, you know. Well, Metacritic <laughs> is also a, uh, an amalgamation of most online reviews, right? Yeah. Oh, so. it's like a... um. What's an aggregator site? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's how it works. Yeah. I'm not actually 100% on that, mm-hmm. but that's the that's the way. It makes sense it if it's called Metacritic, because it's like meta yeah. is like of critics. You Psychoanalyzing know? <laughs> yeah. Metacritic. The general rule of thumb is don't trust critics, you know? Yeah, I mean, if, if get, you really are curious I, about an experience, you look kinda, up pure gameplay. Yeah, you that, really, that's like it. I think there are, or something. I, I think there are good games journalists or games critics. There, they, there are some that do their job, yeah. but for the most part, like every fucking tongue in cheek, uh, fucking critic who calls himself a critic doesn't know yeah. jack or shit. Honestly, IGN like gave the iPhone 11 the same score as Dying Light 2. <laughs> Wait, <what? laughs> are you judging that on the same scale? It's like, <laughs> how, how the fuck? What even is your scale, IGN? <laughs> Yeah, I think they get. I mean, the, the game reviewers and the game like playtesters, or well, not the playtesters, because that's something different. But like the people who actually critique the games, I feel like they're so vastly different in the way that they actually play the game. Yeah. Because it's all a, a user experience. You're gonna have someone who like Alex who is gonna try to find like the most cheese method possible mm-hmm. to complete the game in the best way. I'm I'm not interested in cheese. I'm just worried about. I'm just interested in breaking the things that they've intended for me. Whether that turns into cheesing or does not turn into cheesing is independent. Whether you mean <laughs> the desire to find bugs is there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and then you have people who want to, you know, play the game for what it is and like actually experience it like a Fisher Price. Wait, shit game. on like my gameplay style. Oh, I'm not like, shitting. I think it's no, legitimate. no. That's why it's like, oh, you know, some people who int- play the game the intended way. You no, know, the I way that Alex over here with his <laughs> dumbass strat where he tries to break every game. Where I'll you have you know, I climbed dude. every wall in Dying Light like, Two's tutorial. Every single to be wall. honest, dude, you spent like. Two hours in the tutorial. <laughs> because I wanted to see if I could clip past any wall. And, and not even through the entire tutorial, just in that one starting area, you spent like two hours at least. I was waiting for everyone to catch up. So you could do co-op. 
He's also messing with the settings a little bit. But I was. Yeah, yeah and I, I guess my semantics on. made it seem a little bit uh, like a negative connotation. No, I'm just shitting on you. I love that. <laughs> I, th I think in general, that is a pretty legit way to play a game. It's just like the way that you... Br I mean, speedrunning is literally yeah. based off of that shit. How fast can you beat it? How efficient can you be? Yeah. Even if it's not, you know, entirely breaking the game. Um, but you have critics that do on... They're on opposite ends and they're like, this was a dog shit game <laughs> because I couldn't cheese it or it's yeah. not efficient or it's really boring. And then you have another person who's like, I thought it was really cool mm -hmm. because it took a lot of time to progress and everything yeah. like that. And then it ends up being like a mediocre score for what would be a really atmospheric or like yeah. slow paced game it's just because not, someone's like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I assume that's why they try to collect as many... Or for Metacritic, that's why they try to collect as many yeah. numbers as they can because yeah. like, well, we want to find the general consensus yeah. that either this game is good or this game is bad mm -hmm. i think the best critics out there are steam reviewers in the comments yeah honestly yeah. They, they well, that's also an aggregation depth. too yeah it is but like you know those are like liked by people who like you know are looking at the game or found this it. funny yeah exactly <laughs> i i and i think there's just like insane people who make like uh, something that would be like three pages. Oh my god! Dude, I, like, I love you. those. People. I read them they, because they go through like the gameplay, yeah. the atmosphere, the music. Yeah. It's like it's like good I, on I, you, it's man. Super in depth, but I don't know. It just kind of it, it comes off at face value cringe. Although it is yeah. very useful information because I'm like you spent I, like maybe two hours on I, writing this review yeah. that maybe forty people will see. As a reviewer, I absolutely cannot cringe at like a two page <laughs> essay. I will not let myself cringe. <laughs> Because it's just like I, just, I get to see their <laughs> their entire breakdown of everything that they personally like. They a lot of them preface by saying that that was their experience, their opinion. And it's like mm -hmm. okay, professional right off the rip. They're like, this is what you took away from this. That's huge, and mm -hmm. I, I I just I really enjoy reading true to life everyone else's experiences on things. Yeah. Because there's like some reviews that are like game is good, and it's like it's only because it's got like. Four people who bought it. It's got like picture yeah. of tits on the title. And, you know, <laughs> good enough for me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> game's great. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that, and it, it's it's also dependent on the game. If it's a game that kind of breaks boundaries, people will be like, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Like it's it's strange. Yeah, or like it doesn't fit into a norm. Or it's it's not. People like I genres too. I don't. I think people are open to like newer concepts in games that like that usually exists in an indie game you I know think, what i mean I, I think in terms of the actual player base like the broader player base mm. but specifically critics yeah yeah i think there's a with critics like there's always like weird incentives and there's like weird um yeah mm -hmm. like, whereas like ign won't give anyone lower than a nine yeah. if you pay them well <laughs> enough <laughs> oh yeah but it's it's just like who because critics also make a living off of the games that they review, yeah. right? So it's like they have to not piss off the developers and have like an embargo on their mm -hmm. fucking like their reviews. Like, oh, you can't fucking release this review until like yeah. the game's out, whatever. Yeah. Like they're trying to get the cutting edge, the early access, so that way they can shit out their review. Yeah. The f be the, the first person yeah. to review it. And so that way they make more money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they keep giving like, oh, your game is actually like a fucking four. It's like, well, we don't <laughs> fucking want you then. Yeah, like, we don't want well, to give you our game to review. Yeah. If that's the case. And IGN, I feel like rarely ever gives anything like a five or below. It's always like if it's a dog shit game, it'll be like five, six, five point five. Yeah. yeah, I feel like IGN has gotten better with the reviews more recently, but also they're. They aren't worth much in my eyes. It was I, just way too industry because mm -hmm. they were one, they were one of like the first gaming platforms to exist. Yeah, and true. now it's just they like were the everyone, first ones with a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that's Game lie, Informer. Yeah, Game, Informer. <laughs> Game Informer was the shit. There's probably some shit before Game Informer. Probably, yeah. yeah. But they were not as like big or well known. Yeah, Game Informer most was likely. the Nintendo Power. Well, they didn't review like their <laughs> own games. They're not like the game. The game that we released is dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> this new Mario game, hate it. Don't buy Fucking it. Don't buy this shit. It's trash. That's what they did for Earthbound. That's literally how they advertised Earthbound. They're What's like Earthbound? this game. What? What is Earthbound? It's in. Uh, it's like Nintendo's foray into RPGs. Back. I don't know when it was actually made. It was probably like. 90s, oh, maybe. Okay. I could be getting this completely wrong, yeah. but they. I mean, they've only been That's making where video NES games comes since like. From. Yeah. 
Ne- Super uh, Smash no Bros. Nez. Nez. Okay. Uh, Nez. 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 No, Nez. Hold on, hold on. Like a Pez dispenser? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want Nez. Nez? One S. Nez. No, it's not. <laughs> it is not. Any it's- S? No, the character Ness. Oh, I don't know who the fuck that is. It's the little boy from Wait, fucking what? Smash. Oh, you're no. thinking of fucking Smash. Game Cows. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking of. That's what I was thinking of. That's, yeah, that's where Ness is from. He's the protagonist of, I think, the... No, the first <laughs> the first Earthbound game is something completely different. That's Mother 1. Earthbound is Mother 2. I never played these games. I played uh, <laughs> Earthbound, Mother 2, and mm. I want to play Mother 3. Uh, that's where Lucas is from. I, I, oh, heard, I heard Lucas. they're Lucas. called classics. Yeah, Lucas. <laughs> People, that game is actually fucking insane. Earthbound. Yeah, like super, it's supposedly really dark, right? It's like, it's the undertones are really dark. The okay. final boss is super fucked up. Mm. It's it's really fucked up. I mean, spoilers if you really care about Earthbound, but it's like nope. it's like you you fight all these wacky creative... Cre- you literally fight like a pile of puke as one of the bosses, and oh it's like God. a mob boss and shit. And then at the end, it's like an amorphous, ambiguous like mind entity that's like, help me. <laughs> I'm like dying. I am you. Oh my God. God. It's like, what? what? <laughs> There's like no image. It's just the background of the fighting uh... It has a it, Undertale is a little bit inspired by that kind of setup mm-hmm. where it's just a character and a background. Oh, and okay. the background is the enemy, and it's like morph, morphing and shifting. Jesus. There's like distorted faces and shit, and it's like, what is what is going on? <laughs> Imagine that being a kids' game, then you get that for your it kids. Was. I mean, that's why people didn't <laughs> play it again. They're like, oh, Nintendo's releasing a new game, wow, Mario, fucking it's Pokemon. Like, your and it's son like, disappears for a weekend. He comes back changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, father. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the importance of my role in society now. <laughs> Nay, the universe. <laughs> we. We are all one piece in the giant puzzle that makes up. Speaking of, have you seen the latest episode of One Piece? (laughs) (laughs) It's full weave. Father, have you seen One Piece? Have they found the One Piece yet? (laughs) I mean, back then, One Piece was like just starting out, too. (laughs) When Earthbound came out. When when Earthbound came out, it was probably not even conceived yet. Yeah, that was before Pickle Rick. (laughs) Have you heard of Pickle Rick, (laughs) Father? I've just been Earthbound. (laughs) Son, what the fuck are you talking about? Dude, the war like pickle Rick. President Joe Biden. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's just a senator. What are you talking about? Pickle Rick or governor. was like America's second 9-11. <laughs> in the way that it changed people okay <laughs> and i don't think we can think ever it. forget pickle rick i don't think like, we can so like think about it okay after 9-11 a ton of people became like super racist towards muslims right after pickle rick people became people super became racist towards super redditors. racist towards pickles yeah <laughs> no redditors <laughs> redditors <laughs> actually true dude like, like, same thing happened with marvel though there, wait, what? <laughs> Reddit <laughs> loves the Marvel universe, the oh, Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe. Did you guys, did you guys enjoy the Szechuan sauce when they brought it back? I didn't, I, I didn't I even didn't have, have it. Yeah. I, I, I genuinely like kind of liked it. Like it was just well, probably probably a okay. good yeah. sauce. Would it's, I would I scream and screech yeah. at the, no. the counter of a Wubba McDonald's? Dub dub. No, I, <laughs> I would rather ask for a different kid's toy with my <laughs> McDonald's. And I actually have the meal. girl's toy. <laughs> I'm a femme boy, as you can I'm tell by my cat boy. ears and tail. <laughs> Could you not tell by the the cat headphones that I'm wearing? <laughs> the kid he beats Earthbound. He's like, Father, I'm a femme boy. <laughs> <laughs> the mind entity told me that it was my true my true <laughs> self. Ness helped me have become a femme boy. <laughs> <laughs> the final boss is just like take estrogen take estrogen <laughs> take estrogen <laughs> that's the only way to beat it yeah. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> it's like attack list is like uh, one of them is hormone replacement therapy <laughs> like holy fuck uh, yeah I suggest actually playing that game I think that would be a good I suggest game. getting estrogen <laughs> I suggest getting estro- estrogen and then playing the game it's a it's a really long game and without knowing what to do it's an even even longer game because mm-hmm. of the puzzles that you have to do in an RPG world the puzzles are usually like go find this guy go talk to this yeah. guy or like you need to use this item here it's like that kind of stuff but it's really they set up hints that are very not cryptic but they point you in the right direction very well but mm-hmm. you won't really necessarily know what to do mm-hmm. so not, playing the game for the first time I was like awful. I got <laughs> stuck a lot <laughs> I did have to look up walkthroughs because I'm a, a wow. plebe. Yeah. I know 
but I've done that a lot. I, I, it was really fun. I thought it was a really cool experience. See, I, so, I if if there's a game that require like there's a combat encounter that I'm failing on. And I know that the combat is the reason why I can't progress. I don't feel like a game like that I would ever look up a walkthrough. But something like a puzzle where it's like you have to find this stick on this discolored <laughs> pixel on the third room of the second tutorial yeah. after it's you've not, made your third character. Like I don't <laughs> I don't want to figure that shit it's out. It's not it's not that crazy. It's I know. I'm crazy. just saying, like, if there's like if there's shit like puzzles in a game, I'm not afraid to just pick up a guide, look up whatever yeah, the fuck answer I need to. It's like Legend of Zelda, for like the older ones. Oh yeah, yeah. I did the same shit. I was like, when I was, when I, when I played Ocarina of Time, when I went back to it, I was like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know how long the game's been out and I was kind of embarrassed to not be able to figure <laughs> it out. Like the water temple. I was like, what you're telling me on? kids did this shit. What yeah. The fuck? My <laughs> sisters did this at 13 and I can't figure it out at 20. To be fair though, I had my mom help me in Ocarina of Time. She beat the water <laughs> temple for me. Nice. Mom! What a supportive mom. <laughs> yeah, really. No, I can't be the water temple. He's kicking my ass. Dude, you're lucky your mom's good at video games. Mine freaking sucks, dude. <laughs> mom, I hate my... you. You lost all my lives in Mario, mom. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you stupid cock. What the fuck is wrong with you? Get out of my house. Get out of my house. <laughs> you ruined it. You ruined my life. I hate you. You just break the game console over your your knee. Give it, it Buy me a new one. Have you guys ever seen those reactions to like uh, these like these girlfriends deleting their boyfriends? Fucking like FIFA. Uh, dude, fucking... I used to feel so bad for that shit. It's like, wow. Who like, are you, bro? They like toss it out the window and they'll be like, oh, I'll buy you a new one. I'd be like, but my data, dude. <laughs> that is ten years. <laughs> I was working at one hundred percent and fucking uh, fucking uh, need hey, for yo, speed. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, if someone were to delete my Dying Light 2 second character, I would be very pissed I'm gonna go, off. I'm going to race you home. I'm going to break into your house <laughs> and break your, your PC. I have left my computer on. There is zero security stopping you from doing that right now. <laughs> Good thing you told me that. I shouldn't have said I'm anything. I'm sending a PC assassin to your house right now. Hello, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> You're like fumbling over your phone. No, please. I have only a limited amount of time. Steam remote play quick. Yeah. I have to beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hey, what was the hardest you've ever raged at a video game? Do you remember what game it was? Uh, Call probably of Duty. CS:GO. <laughs> Competitive um, games. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I do you remember like a single player game? Single player game. A single player game that I got pissed off at. Ooh. Oh. Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny watching you do that, that shit. was so annoying. It would be like watching it. I'd be like, I could do this. I could do this no, so can't. easily. No, you can't. And I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I have like the, the, the perfect <laughs> I have the perfect amount of narcissism that lets me believe that I can do any video game feat I see. Yeah. Just like give me I, enough I time, I can totally do it. Yeah, especially during Valorant Cruise. Oh clips. yeah, <laughs> cool. it's just like I'm watching <laughs> professional yeah, yeah. Valorant. It's like you you literally just flashed yourself, and then you peeked wide, and you got two kills. Like I, where's my contract like, <laughs> right now? Like, like I could do that. I don't want to be like some T1 team. Just like put me anywhere professional. I'll climb <laughs> on my own. I just gotta get known. <laughs> yeah, you just you just need the name. Really, that's it. No matter if you're bad or good, you'll get hired <laughs> just as long as you have a name. Hey, we need you on the team. Cool. What position? Water boy. <laughs> How many followers you got? 200K. All right. Your head, your head captain, your IGL. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right, flash yourself in pink wide. <laughs> <laughs> Help sewer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Valorant teams do have like an IGL that doesn't actually play, right? Yeah, like they do. Uh, that was yeah. One, I think I brought it up on a previous podcast, yeah. but that was one of the reasons why... Uh, like a professional team was disqualified from one of the events was because the <laughs> the uh, the coach in all chat typed help sewer <laughs> <laughs> and it disqualified their entire team. Wait, why? Because they're not supposed to talk in all chat. Yeah, coaches what? aren't allowed to talk during the during the I round. I feel like the, because they're supposed to talk have, during like timeouts and bullshit. Like coaches that. have um, their time. Oh wait, no, I don't think coaches see the other team shit. But like coaches. Just the way that it's set up, like you're just not supposed to. Yeah, talk, they, like, they have their round. own time to speak. Like, like, oh, you know, interesting. Like, oh, it's like, 
in football during like yeah. halftime and shit. You know, it's like yeah, the you can't, yeah stuff. coach or can't no, be in, like in between plays. Yeah, you know, like yeah, each, yeah, yeah. each round, sense, Valorant yeah. would be like a play. Wow, you know? Valorant and, is so much like football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah, much. It really is. Like all the players are jacked and like. <laughs> I mean, they, uh, have, yeah, yeah, they're they're. I mean, fun, Ruckus so. might not be jacked, but he's thick as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's he's got a thick neck. <laughs> yeah. I don't know many Valorant players to be honest. Well, I you know, know, you know Rockus though. Rockus? How does he's go, he's the one with the fat ass. I don't know. <laughs> Objectifying oh Valorant players. Wow. <laughs> There's so many Valorant players with a fat ass, okay? Don't tell me that. You're Don't rating the teams that. by the fattest ass. You're like, well, <laughs> this team's got a fatter ass, but this team has a better shape, you know? <laughs> I think they're going to win the <laughs> the regionals. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to nationals, boys. We're, get, we're getting kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> I literally the looked up Rockus Pro just like, ass. <laughs> just ass. They're sponsored by like Planet Fitness. <laughs> Would you believe me if I said this was an unedited photo of his ass? No way. Shut up. <laughs> like, describe it. Not describe it. He's, that is a dumper. Yeah, he is legitimately thick. Cancel button. <laughs> fuck, that dude's got a dumpy. That's yeah, the no, fucking Mega that's, Dumper 3000. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> Unedited. Wow. It's like the, the picture of Donald Trump's ass when he was like golfing or whatever. Oh my God. That, it's Donald really Trump is thick. It. Yeah, he could play Valorant. He, he, he has a name for himself. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> the, I'm, I'm going like, sewers. <laughs> we do phrenology. Go ahead, <laughs> we do phrenology through people's like ass. Like if the fatter their ass, the better they are at Valorant. I mean, <laughs> that that just the fatter their ass means that they can sit down for longer True. periods of time. Practice for longer. And practice and not get no. uncomfortable. Oh, okay. They, they so you're saying the it's a confounding state. variable. Yeah, they hit the tilt state okay. a lot less often I see, than yeah. people with thinner asses. Yeah. Imagine how much chaos you can actually cause if you were, if there was no. Yeah. Obama in, in a professional, in a professional yeah <laughs> if there was a prof in a professional valorant setting that you were there was no team chat it was all just text it was yeah all text all in that would all. be horrible it doesn't <laughs> it'd it'd be be so so it's all text to speech actually <laughs> <laughs> that would be even worse yeah if, i mean like you'd have to confuse your your how would you even get across that you're going in a certain <laughs> it's like go a actually go b and it's like which one are they going to you which to, one is my team actually going to you need to come up with like a cipher uh to like just you need to encrypt your fucking essentially yeah <laughs> you need to you need to fucking decode like the the fucking russian telecom lines <laughs> yeah well, uh what the fuck was that in yeah, the, I, the i'm trying to 40s. think what it was yeah alan turing Phone guy. No. Phone guy, Alan Turing. Event. <laughs> <laughs> the event that happened in the 40s. That'd be, it would just be utter chaos at that point. Just being like, oh, I'm, I'm f uh, flashing out. Uh, you're not even allowed uh, speech, like uh, voice chat. It's just all type really quick. That would be the most disgusting yeah, game it doesn't, in the world. Yeah, it doesn't, first of all, it doesn't tell you who sent the message. It doesn't tell you what team. And it just plays Dude. the text to speech over the comms. Everything's red. Everything's the other team. <laughs> yeah, you're fully colorblind in the game, too. So you can't see team, like, at all. You could like probably just people. You could you could probably get away. Oh my god, that's like hardcore. Yeah, yeah I think that would be fucking sick. It could be an interesting uh, idea, actually. You Nobody could, steal this. This is the null thought yeah. official branded video. Trademark, 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 trademark. Soup, 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 yeah, soup. We own Valorant now. <laughs> I thought you were saying soup. <laughs> soup. <laughs> if you steal us, we will pour soup on you. <laughs> I will tar and soup you. <laughs> get souped, bitch. Soup and feathered. Soup and feathered. Topic change. Alex, what Whoa. is the dream of life and death? Oh, I was just thinking, I was driving home and I was like, there have been plenty of times where I thought I was like in a, like a car crash or like I died, like cl close life or death experiences. And then me continuing on, you know. Oh, and you think you're dead? Yeah. yeah, I've, yeah. I've had that we, too. We've had this yeah. conversation yeah. before, I remember. And just like, it came back to me recently and I was like, yeah, am I sure? Like, am I really <laughs> sure? <laughs> yeah, like you get no into a, like an almost accident, and you're you you're like, whoa, Jesus Christ! Yeah, and it's then like, it's like I actually just died there. Yeah, yeah, it's like what what is the point of me continuing the existence? Is it just that way I smile in like my final moments, like kind of shit? It's like I guess I'm just making the most of whatever time I got, whether it be yeah. like in a dream fake kind of time mm -hmm. or like uh, I'm actually alive and I'm trying to live out yeah. the rest of it. Like I'm just trying to 
die with a smile on my face, I guess. <laughs> well, that's the meaning of life. Just shut up. Being I happy. hate life. <laughs> shut up, dude. Get out of here. Stop <laughs> being deep. Well, I did play Earthbound in the 90s. and I Nobody foresaw this yeah. happening. <laughs> no, I, you foresaw this happening when you're in 1999. Father, I'm going to die in a car crash in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> the event. And it's the dark troll face. <laughs> <laughs> fucking August 4th, 2021. <laughs> You'll understand what this means eventually, Father. Have you guys ever seen the game Petscop or a pseudo game? Oh, what? Yeah. No. Didn't, uh, what's his face? Yeah. Power Cynical made a review on it. Fart Boy. Fart Boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why is why whole oh, small tangent? Why is Power Cynical known as just like this Fart Boy? Oh, because so like in I uh, see all this fart is related YouTube drama. drama. Yeah, yeah, it's YouTube drama. There was I think like a year or two ago maybe. Um Pyro was like accused of like grooming a minor. Oh. Yeah, on Discord. Oh, cool. Yeah. And um and so basically Oh yeah, wait, yeah. hold. That led to some fart shit. What? Because what that's happened what, That's what they he, were talking about. He had to dump all of his DMs in order to prove his innocence basically. Okay. And in those DMs is like <laughs> fat fart furry role play essentially a lot of it. And uh and I think He didn't know the person was a minor. Yeah, until, I think like, the person like lied uh oh, in, in chat. Okay. Um so, so take for know. that what you will. And I, I, think, I mean like that's that, that's fair I, at that point. I think like I think Pyro was like either just eighteen or like nineteen or something. Oh, so it's yeah, like, okay. And they, and Is they he were, that young? Yeah, he's I thought he was like young. he's that young and he's the furry yeah. fart boy now. Yeah. Damn, branded. Dude, Honestly, all, for all the, furries are young. I mean, yeah, I kind of don't give up. a shit. Like, I'm curious. <laughs> you like what you, you really like. don't think that there's like an eighty year old furry out there? There probably is, but I'm saying most furries are young. He, he's the only one who genuinely needs to wear a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's, that's why he doesn't the show the lower version. half in all of his videos. <laughs> he's just, he's just, just wearing diapers. Yeah, all the time. fully loaded diaper. Anyways, Petscop. <laughs> <laughs> What's Petscop? Petscop. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a game that somebody he's made. He's 24 to tell a story. Oh, okay. So I was wrong. So he was, yeah, early 20s. So he was actually like about our age when all that shit went down suspiciously. Um, thank you for send second handing me that nicotine, Alex. <laughs> You just dragged breath me with fucking. <laughs> he mystified you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you were one of those machines I made him at the zoo. Uh, anonymous. <laughs> what? What? Anonymous? <laughs> what? <laughs> I made it an anonymous. <laughs> oh, anonymous. Okay. Homonym. I'm a, I'm a homophobe now. I'm a homophobe. So I don't know if it was a game that somebody made to tell this kind of story, but it was basically an art project of like a horror game where it was a game that seemed super normal on the surface where you were collecting things called like there, there was something like geocaching kind of thing, like in real life. Kind no, no, of no, thing? It, it, like it had nothing to do game. with like real life, but oh, there, okay. was a, Platformer. there was a right. there was a story about it in real life where like it was some kid's birthday party and like people died. I'm not even the sure. Bite what the bite of 87? Actual... <laughs> 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 the bite of Was that the bite of 87? <laughs> Fucking No. <laughs> I don't know what the actual story was because it was kind of vague about it, which is like, you know, most horror games yeah, like that. Um, uh, but it was, uh, it was basically, I don't know if the things you were collecting in the game were called like children or something, but it was <laughs> <laughs> what the Pyro Cynical plays. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so that's why you reviewed the game. <laughs> the, only reason, the only reason he has any sort of connection to it is because, yeah, <laughs> the only reason he has any sort of connection to it is because he made like an, that was one of, like one of his most popular videos early on. He made like an hour long video discussing about what the game was. And okay. it was like one of his first like reviews, mm -hmm. like uh, long form review things. Yeah. And, uh, it got a lot of it garnered a lot of uh, attention and i actually followed after watching that video it was still going on like the story because mm -hmm. there was a youtube channel depicting a let's play of someone like a, a third party playing this game like some from someone's like house security footage no it was it was just gameplay of the of the game okay, just some but they were like role it. playing to it essentially no there was no audio oh no there was audio in the beginning but at the end it was like very little uh commentary mm. it was just like this dude would be like, what is going on? And then it would just be like <laughs> silence for the re like 10 minutes. It would be like 20 minute, 15 minute, 10 minute episodes. Um, but it was really interesting because the the premise of the game started out really happy and cheerful. And then it was like, it was just such a, it was like a surrealistic game. A cereal game? Yeah. <laughs> you get, a, you get like, like your Cocoa Cheerios. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, it's in the back of the box. <laughs> so it had kind of like this vague attitude about itself where you didn't really know what was going on. You didn't know where it was going to lead. And then it was basically like he found like an out of bounds glitch or like he found something that was not finished in the game. And it would delve uh, into this rabbit hole of just shit. There's a dog barking outside. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's a it child like a yelling. Yeah. <laughs> There's a seal outside. Oh, yeah, screaming. Course. It's a dog yelping for help. <laughs> hey, shut up! <laughs> We're not helping. <laughs> Get the uh, air rifle. <laughs> and it kind of just dove deeper and deeper into like this commentary between like this kid and uh, like a birthday party and people who died. Um, that was a lot like five there was like a, there was it was like a vast uh open field of just random unfinished assets that you could go into that had like vague connections to one another telling mm-hmm. a story over a while and then you would collect these uh i'm pretty sure there were children but i'm not sure what they actually were um <laughs> <laughs> shut up pyro no. shut up pyro <laughs> He's innocent. I mean, he, he didn't, he didn't collect. He just, <laughs> yeah. He's pretty faithful. Just, yeah. He just told a really unique story. If you guys haven't seen it, there's a, I can link the yeah. YouTube channel. It's, yeah, it's very interesting. It, it sounds pretty, uh, it, not necessarily pretty similar, but there's a, there's a game that like, I, there's been a lot of games that have like real life, uh, like can quote unquote connection. Yeah. Uh, they make it like an art thing. Yeah. It, it, was, it was like it, an ARG. Yeah. Uh, there was this one game called inscription that was relatively popular, uh, recently and the whole premise behind that was that like supposedly the inscription game itself is a like a real life ai program really that is like in like made its way to the internet essentially and it's just like running i don't i didn't play the game i didn't really get into it but it is supposed to be like this this real life thing that's you know made its way into a game and you're playing out the game and you're learning the lore about it. It has like a real life oh, okay. connection. And I think, how do you guys feel about that kind of stuff in video games? I think, I think really it's really cool. interesting. I, I think it's interesting, but I don't think it necessarily adds anything too substantial to like the game itself, other than enriching its own lore. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think that's, that's the point, the of, point it. of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. As long as like, the, I mean, if the, if the gameplay is fun, that's a different story. Yeah. yeah. If playing the game is uh, you know still has these horror elements to it, that's fine. But in terms of a story, doing yeah. like an ARG element, I think that's very interesting. What does ARG stand for? Alternate reality game, where uh, it's basically yeah. saying it, it. Typically, it's it's uh, it relates to real life, mm-hmm. like a story that happened in real life or something that is okay. historical fiction. I like mean, I think Petscop is historical fiction, where the story didn't actually <laughs> happen, but it's relating to a real yeah, life event. Right. Yeah, I think there was a massive like ARG uh can I remember watching a YouTube documentary on it about this like the 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 big triple A title game that you know inc- included ARG into it and you had to like go out into this real world find this like geocache and like it would unlock the next step of the puzzle for like oh what's going on inside the game and it was really mm-hmm. interesting and I don't fucking remember what the fuck it was mm-hmm. I'm kind of pissed. The Binding of Isaac did that for a character. Really? After one of the updates um, no, Keeper. <laughs> Did, they got the baby and <laughs> Binding of Isaac? Let's go. There's totally a mod of that I'm going to install there's, it. There's a baby mod for uh, the heart. Really? The, every time it beats, it's go, let's go, let's go, <laughs> no. let's go. Yeah, I would actually hate that. <laughs> that that would drive you insane. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> um, but for Keeper, after the update for like one of the DLCs, there was only one character added in that, in that DLC, and Edmund McMullen loves adding that kind of like deep secrets to the game poop. like to uh <laughs> he does love poop <laughs> to unlock the lost which is another character you had to do like a f- like a five step super specific bullshit yeah don't you have to like use the shovel or some shit i was trying to unlock- no that's uh forgotten oh i was trying to but unlock that's a similar forgotten, story and like i only have 15 hours <laughs> and i know i know it's possible to get forgotten uh, Cause on Devil Deal, I got like a shovel or something that I can create a trap door to skip a level, and I know like there's some chain That's of a events. Different shovel. You, the, what? <laughs> no, the first shovel you have to do is you have to beat the first boss of like basement one in under a minute, and then you have to go back to the first room that you start in, bomb the middle of the room, or I think it's anywhere within the, room. the minute. No, that okay. just you have to beat the boss in a minute, and then you hear like Isaac's mom run and yell, and then you drop a Isaac. you drop a bump. Yeah, do, 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 yeah, do. literally that. Like that is the noise where you that you did it right, and then you go uh, to the first room, you drop a bomb, a shovel piece falls from the sky, and then like mom's foot stomps on you, 
like every like 10 seconds or fifth like i don't know some arbitrary amount of time maybe 30 seconds and it makes the run super fucking difficult and you have to go all the way to the dark room which is the end of the game you have to bomb a, there's a certain room that only spawns if you have the shovel and then you go bomb that spot and then you get the other shovel piece oh my or it's, god it's something like that i think you get the other shovel piece by doing something else but um anyways back to keeper yeah. it was a it was a thing that was in the game's code but you couldn't actually unlock it in any sort of way mm -hmm. and then edmund i don't know exactly the story but there was like coordinates that got tweeted out or leaked in some sort of way i think it was actually in the game's code and Ooh. people went to this coordinate in real life and it was like outside of an office building and they had to literally dig up in this flower bed and it was like a little uh like keeper statue or whatever oh my god and then once people showed the picture of it to edmund then the character was like unlocked in the game that's kind of cool but it wasn't even <laughs> unlocked to like the people you still had to unlock it in the game it was just available yeah. to unlock yeah. in the game that's so fucked that's crazy that's actually a lot of fun though yeah that's really interesting i i think that's like a really cool idea because it adds it like keeps a whole your fans occupied layer. with your game and well i think also it just like it adds like a layer of immersion you know what i mean and in, in, you feel interest, like you're a part of it yeah you feel more interest in like the actual lore that's going on where as opposed to lore being a backdrop usually. yeah like mm -hmm. dying light 2 where it's really just a game to see how many times you can press the space button <laughs> really quick yeah really really quickly yeah. that's all i've gotten out of the story so far Pretty it's, it's a space. creative <laughs> it's a creative endeavor that i think needs to be done more because there's so many ways to do that yeah, it can it's be not done necessarily super poorly though i'd oh, be super, super poorly, scared yeah. of like people who try to take that kind of thing to the next level and ultimately fail i think um far cry 3 did it really well with um because the the main character or the main uh like Voss or whatever mm -hmm. right he looks a lot like his character like they modeled it after yeah, him yeah, apparently yeah. and like they did that whole series with um oh with, yeah with Voss the, and okay, Christopher Mintz that. and all yeah. that shit and like there was like it was honestly really well done yeah I I, I remember watching that like years after it came out yeah because uh, I didn't know it existed but uh yeah no it was really well done I was yeah like super surprised with that because it's really True to Voss's character, it makes a lot of yeah. sense. It builds him up for the game yeah, itself. Exactly. It's nice. Yeah. And then they fumble it on the second half of that game. With yeah, the, Voss should have been the main character. I enjoyed the the new island, the new island in Far Cry Three, mm -hmm. but I didn't enjoy the story. Like I was fully disconnected yeah. after the first island. Yeah, I feel it. How do you feel about uh, Doki Doki Liter Literature Club doing I it? I fucking hated it. You didn't like it? I, I just don't like visual novels in the first place. Well, in terms of like a visual novel gameplay, yeah, that's on your own. But in terms of like the ARG aspect, where you have to what like do they go do? in. ARG uh, well, like at the end, well, the game slowly obviously becomes way, way more mm -hmm. insane. Way I've more. never played it, yeah, but I know like it's the, supposed the to be like a, the premise is like it's a self-aware game yeah. and that, you know, it, Monica is like the the all seeing entity, and like you can't finish the game unless you go into the game files and like delete her character file. Really, yeah, wow. it, it's it's an interesting way to view like how do you view completion in a video game? Is it like do you at, at Monica you stop essentially? Yeah, is it like because a, a game like Doki Doki Literature Club, uh, it like yeah sure you can track completion through like achievements and stuff like that, but let's just say we abolish achievements from a video game entirely. What when do you say that you're like actually done with it? You know, well, like I mean, part of it. I, I think there's two different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if that's if that's the case, I've completed a lot of games. Yeah, so. yeah, I'm, I'm a completionist <laughs> <laughs> in that respect. <laughs> All right, I'm bored. I hundred percent it. <laughs> I don't. I don't view hundred percenting as like. Well, I mean, I do view it as completing, but I don't need to hundred percent a game to yeah. complete it. There are a lot of games that I feel like I do want to get 100% of the achievements on because they're relatively easy. Mm -hmm. I don't like achievements where they're like, you have to get everything all the time forever to, yeah. you know, get a, a certain achievement. It's like, get like, a get a gold, get number one in the world on this time yeah. trial and then improve it by 0.1 seconds. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, it's like, who, uh, thank I you. I I'll don't. stay at 99%. <laughs> the, yeah, um, that kind of shit is, I'm like, who cares? I, I prefer like, um, like at least in like uh games that are open world like red dead redemption 2 or like dying light or something like um i would never probably go out of my way to 100 complete 100 complete it but like i i will do the side missions that like get like pushed towards me right mm -hmm. like if i go to some area and there's a side mission available i'll fucking do it like fuck the main story because it's like it's like a natural progression through it yeah. through the world you know what i mean and you kind of interact with it a little better in I, my opinion I, mm -hmm. I think from like a role like from a role-playing perspective mm -hmm. in like an open world game like red dead 2 
it makes more sense to me that Arthur Morgan, that fucking uh, uh, um, um, Redfart. John Marston, John Marston, yeah. Uh, <laughs> both Arthur Morgan and John Marston, like it, it makes sense that there's two characters there, two characters there to complete all the side quests. It makes more yeah. sense to me that Arthur Morgan couldn't complete all of this, yeah. and this is John living in this new world. From a role playing perspective, I think that a hundred percent completion doesn't make any sense, mm -hmm. like narratively. It yeah. Just, oh yeah. Like what? Yeah, doing everything. Collect yeah. every single fucking reptile reptile skin ever. Like I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've already upgraded like my fucking my my finger. I didn't upgrade like any satchel or anything in Red Dead Redemption. Like you, you I really don't any, need to. No. Like no. I, it got filled up, but like I didn't care. Like I didn't really need space <laughs> yeah, you complete one mission you're like yeah, i'm set for money for, yeah like the for rest a while, of the game yeah. really I, I i finally beat it too oh really yeah. what I, did you cry i didn't cry i felt really sad though okay yeah okay. i I, it, I didn't have i i cried really yeah, yeah i cried i almost cried i was like i was feeling quiverish i you know, you know what, crying at a video game i cried, a, Zane, do, I cried do, you first first do you care about spoilers no, for I Red Dead too? i cried in the first red dead well I, I, why are you asking me ask the audience do you care Spoiler skip, alert. Skip fucking 10 seconds or whatever. I cried immediately as the horse died and then oh, Arthur yeah, came yeah. right over. When like, the horse oh, died, that shit was so fuck. sad. Or I when was... he was talking to, uh, uh, did you ever get, complete the side quest with uh, Sister Maria or whatever the fuck? Sister. Oh, yeah. Dude, Dude that oh my God. I, 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 that, so <laughs> that whole dialogue thing, it, was, it was so good. It, it was, was so perfectly real, yeah. man. It, like, he talks about, so like, Arthur, um, you know, he gets like diagnosed. Okay, we're gonna spoil the yeah. fucking. This game has been out for like two years. Yeah, okay. I know sure. Michael's playing it, so fuck off, Michael. But uh, <laughs> Arthur gets like diagnosed with tuberculosis, like maybe like halfway through the game, and or maybe before that even. Like he's guaranteed to die yeah. at this point, and okay. so the whole the whole point like of the game is him just like living until he's dead of yeah. tuberculosis. Like he how knows does, why how he's does he die. want to okay. um how does he want to end his life? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I did like a high honor one. I feel like everyone of, is just like yeah. there's no incentive to be low honor or yeah. high honor. It really doesn't well, matter. No, it, it, I mean it changes the way options. yeah it's yeah it changes the way that you can interact with people mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah people just view you yeah. either good or bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think is interesting. Um but uh what's it called? The oh yeah, he gets diagnosed with tuberculosis. And so like he eventually starts being like, at least in my playthrough, the way that I was doing it was like trying to like help people around mm -hmm. him and trying to like, you know, like J John Marson, he wanted to help get him out of the gang and like all these other people. Cause like it's about the destruction of the gang, basically. Like the the whole timeline of how it happened. And like it was I don't know, it was just so well done. It was it was a beautiful experience. Yeah. And I, I think that the game the gameplay fails to live up to the narrative of Red Dead Redemption 2. Maybe in some ways. Uh, like, it's, it's it, like... A, at least the main story loop itself mm -hmm. fails to live up to the actual, like, the level of writing that that yeah. game has put out. Like, yeah. that is a AAA fucking movie title. Yeah, it felt like a movie. And so, like, in this... He has this conversation with this nun that he met a while ago and that he helped with. Can and they... Can and we just show like you a, this scene? Because this... Well, we can't do it in the middle of the I podcast. I know. <laughs> but, like... Uh, and it's it's not going to have the same impact, I think. But... Dude, well, I can still I just start crying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could see that. I... I I've just, I mean, the it, fucking scene yeah. is so because so he good. like he talks about like his fear of death and everything mm -hmm. and like all this other shit like how he's like a That's bad heavy. person. It's it's really heavy and it's like it's real. It feels mm -hmm. raw, you especially know? when you're like playing that character. Yeah, you for you so go long. through that through their whole like story and you learn a lot about them. So it's, uh, it's really good. Shout out Red Dead Redemption too. Yeah, shout, shout out, out. The, shout out the the narr the narrative team on yeah. Red Dead Redemption too. Everyone like, else, you guys kind of dropped the ball a little bit. They're <laughs> kind of keeping you guys up. Keep on your toes. There's we're watching. There's only like two games I feel that felt like a movie when I played them. What was, was the other one? It was yeah, Red Dead Redemption two, and then Jedi Fallen Order. 
or whatever. Really? really? Yeah, dude. Are you like the the camera motions, like the the cinematography of it, like uh, especially the whole opening? Yeah, like I, that, I guess I just didn't enjoy the narrative as much because really? oh. I just I know way too much about fucking yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was interested in the in like the the narrative, like what was happening and shit. Yeah, um, a, lo- a lot of the a lot of like the Star Wars stuff that they've in, they're including into the mm-hmm. story just didn't make yeah. a lot of sense to me. And it was like, oh, okay, I get yeah. where they're going. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about the universe, so it was just kind of cool. You lived also, in the perfect timeline yeah. then for that game, and uh, yeah, right. <laughs> but like the just like the the way that like the camera interacted with the players' movements and mm-hmm. everything, like it was purposefully done to feel yeah. cinematic. You it, know what I mean? They did really well in the environments yeah, and like yeah. just the the it's world beautiful. building. It's a yeah. beautiful game, and like the introductions to each like planet mm-hmm. that you go to, like the. Um, the one where you have to like crash land in the fucking oh, lake yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, there's like these ATATs. Oh, it's a fucking <laughs> epic game. Play it. Play it now. Play it now. Sponsored by. It's a soul like, like sponsored yeah. by Raycon. Raycon. <laughs> no. Sponsored by HelloFresh. This has been the No Thought Podcast. Oh, are we over? We're done. We're well, ending. Right we're ending forever. Now we're done.